I'm over 1,100 text messages, and the two or three people that then will text me back and say, I guess you're not going to respond to me. <laughs> I, I guess I'm on a vacation out in the Caribbean somewhere right now. Oh, boy. That's a good problem to have, though. Good problem to have. Um, uh, obviously, unbelievably excited for this week. Uh, one of the few teams that can say they're still practicing and, and have an opportunity to, to stay in this competition. So um, happy for our kids, happy for our fans. Uh, another step in the right direction in, in, in trying to build a program that we've been fighting for for the last five years. Frank, with that, this, a Sweet 16 matchup beating Duke, just how much does that move the program forward? How much could it help in recruiting and, and getting your name out there across the country instead of just within the state's borders? Yeah, I mean, you, know, it's, you look at our roster, our name gets out outside of the country, not just the, the state, Dave. It's, it's, recruiting's become a national thing. What, what, uh, what helps is it, it makes it credible. Um, you know, when, when, when you can play on the biggest platform of them all and play, uh, in my lifetime, the most successful program that we've had in college basketball, um, and figure out a way to win, you know, it's not like you won a game in the middle of November or December, uh, you know, you, you won it on the big stage. Uh, it makes it credible. And, uh, and having the opportunity to then play Baylor, who's – who over the last 10 years has been remarkable what Scott Drew's done there. I mean, it's, uh, um, uh, you know, I, those six years I was in the Big 12 watching him grow that program and how successful they were. Uh, and then through my first five, not first, my five years here, uh, he's maintained that success. Um, uh, it's pretty powerful in what he's done. And, and to have an opportunity to compete against a team like his, um, is another great platform for our team. Hey, Coach, I'm curious, just how do you go about maybe managing this week? Is you know all eyes are on the Sweet 16, especially this program right now. Do you have to say anything to the players? Just how do you manage them and their time to maybe keep them more busy and away from outside distractions as you guys continue your march? You know, Joe, ever since you've been wearing that Cubs hat, I'm liking you a lot more. I... <laughs> what you got on? There's two Cubs hats now, Coach. Now you got a Cubs hat. But that's just how Phil rolls. He jumps on the bandwagon. It's always been. That's, that's, that's been Phil's repertoire. You know? they, they told me of that before I even got here. said, that Cornbluth guy, if you ever win, he's going to get on your side. I, I, I was told that a long time ago. Uh, um, Joe, that's, uh, that's the biggest challenge not just in our locker room and society today. I deal with my kids at home. I tell my staff all the time, if we don't speak to these kids, someone else will. So if they don't listen to our message because we didn't share it with them, shame on us. But they're kids. We have to do an unbelievable job of keeping their focus on what matters. What matters is not this week. What matters is not the Baylor game. What matters is who we have been through the good and bad to maintain our identity. That's what's given us an opportunity to practice today. Stay connected to that. And when Friday gets here, then be prepared to play the best game you've played all year. Right? But we, that's, that's our biggest challenge with young people today's day and age. Heck, it's our biggest challenge with old people. Go, go to a restaurant. I, you see, I, I sit around, I, I observe a lot. Anytime I go to dinner with my wife, I'll sit there and I'll kind of look around the restaurant. You have grown folks that don't speak to one another, but yet they're on their phone the whole time at dinner. And, and it's, they're probably texting each other. It, it's unbelievable. They're tweeting each other while they're sitting at the same dinner table in the same restaurant. Um, it's it's just society in today's day and age. I, communication continues to be con communication and listening are the two most powerful things to move forward in life. That continues to go backwards in our society. Therefore, 
we all want to act crazy when we don't communicate, but yet people listen to others. It, we have to talk to our guys. They, they look for us for guidance, for leadership, uh, for direction. Uh, if we have to provide that for them. And this week's no different than last week or the week before. Does that mean we win Friday? No. But that's we got to stay grounded as to who we are so then the players feel comfortable that, that we, we're, we're doing things our way. Coach Martin here in the back. You talk about a, a student athlete's mentality. Playing at Madison Square Garden is a big deal. When your team was there earlier this year, do you remember at any point looking at Cinderius during shoot around and just seeing the hurt that here he is at the Mecca of basketball not getting to play? And, and do you think that when he goes back this time, it'll, it'll be a little bit different for him? Uh, I hurt for him that day the same way I did when we played Lander and he didn't play. Uh, because I know how important he is in that locker room. Forget the points and all that, how respected he is amongst his teammates. And I hurt for him because I had to, no different than when I punished my nine-year-old at home. And I don't let him play his video games or he can't go outside or he can't, and, and he sits there and he's miserable. I, that kills me, it drives me nuts. And it makes you think that you're a cruel human being. Uh, but at the end of the day, we as the adults have to make decisions to help these guys learn, grow, mature, and hope that they get another opportunity uh, so they realize how lucky they are. Because as they get older, they probably don't ever get a second opportunity. So as far as him getting an opportunity to play in the place that he always dreamt of playing, you know, God's good, man. God rewards people that, that, that handle their, not who's perfect, but who handles their business the right way. And, and he's handled his business the right way, and guess what? Now he gets an opportunity to, uh, to play in the place that, that uh, he always wanted to play at, that obviously I didn't allow him to play at last time, and he gets to play in it in the biggest stage of them all, or the second biggest stage of them all. You know, Final Four being the biggest, Sweet 16 being the next biggest. Coach Martin, just uh, talk about the growth of, of your program in, in regards to the Dawn Staley. How, how big of a help has she been? She's been to four Sweet 16s. Now you guys are making history being a Sweet 16 in, in the same year. What have maybe you've learned in observing uh, what she's done or anything that she said to you as you guys are making history? Yeah, she, her and I have become real good friends over the years. And, and uh, those first couple years where – were uh, winning uh, didn't happen very often. Um, uh, she pop her head in my office early in the morning and and uh, send me a text late at night, uh, giving of her time, her emotions to try and help me get through the beginning stages. And that's something I'll never forget. That she's she's great that way. She's helped us in recruiting. Anytime we've had recruits come into town. You know, she she she's available. She she'll even if she's in practice, she'll find a window uh, to to spend time and, and and help us sell this university, this community, this program. Uh, I I'm a big believer that winning breeds winning, and Ray Tanner winning and Steve Spurrier winning and Don Staley winning uh, has has enabled people to believe, including this guy here, when I took the job, that we can win here. And uh, then we have to get our players to believe in it. And when, when our players are on campus and they show up to the women's games and they see how good they are and how successful they've become, it gives them hope that we can do it too. Uh, so it's, it's great when, when you can have coworkers like Don. I, I've said this, and I'm going to say it again because I, I, I think this sounds good, but – for me personally, it's powerful. I don't know what I've done in my life to deserve this, but you think about the people I've been around and, and that have helped shape me and form me, whether it's in basketball, men's basketball, my high school coach who's the winningest coach. I, 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 he's the highest winning percentage in the history of the state of Florida. Um, Bob Huggins, uh, Bill Snyder. Think about that. Steve Spurrier calls me every day. You know, Don Staley, Ray Tanner. I don't know what I've done. Every one of those unbelievably successful Hall of Famers. 
and I, they're resources for me as friends and as coworkers. And um, I don't know what I've ever done, but obviously someone's looking out for me. Frank, for those of us who've listened to your conferences for a while, you'll mention a Danny Clemente or a Mike Beasley as a reason, you know, as an example of the things you want. Is Cindarius that kind of transformational player mm -hmm. where five years from now, perhaps with another group, he's the one you'll bring up as an example of what you might want out of your current team at that time? Uh, yeah, absolutely. He, he's even if even if we would have been left out of the NCAA tournament and would have been a first round loss in the NIT, my opinion there would be the same. It, it's uh, uh, who he is, uh, who he's become, his willingness to grow. Um, as a freshman, I couldn't get him to articulate anything to me. Now I sit down and have grown man conversations with the guy. Um, as a freshman, you'd be at practice. He wasn't disrespectful, but he wouldn't say a word. Now he doesn't shut up in practice. And, and some guys talk nonsense. He's talking to help everyone in that practice. Every word that comes out of his mouth is a positive one and one of direction and guidance for his teammates. Um, those are the guys that, that five years from now, you want your next freshman to grow up and become. So yes, the answer to that is absolutely. Frank, you mentioned after the Duke game how important the senior class has been. Were there ever difficult moments for those guys, those guys outside of wins and losses, maybe during a freshman or sophomore year that you had to maybe talk them down and say, we're in this together and it will get better? Um, of course. I have those conversations with my own children. It's part of life. It's, you know, it, it, we, we all act like life is easy and raising kids should be about kumbaya and patty cake. They're kids, man. They're going to do stuff that drives us nuts. And we can't accept that. We have to kick them in their tails when they do those things because we have a duty as the adults to help them understand what it takes to be successful when they become a husband, a father, an employee, whatever it may be. And you have difficult moments. And, and in today's day and age, uh, I, I, I'm not going to speak about our players, but I will speak about my conversations I have with my personal kids because they're my children. If, they're, if any of the players on the team were my children, I'd speak about my private conversation, but I'm not speaking about other people's children. I've told my son, I don't care what your friends are allowed to do. You live in my house. We don't do that as Martins. And that's, that's a big responsibility. That's in... That's my frustration with society right now, is that we all try to make kids think that they can do whatever and that society owes them something. Society don't owe them anything. In life, you get what you earn, and they have to learn how to work, and sometimes you gotta work through failure. All right, that's why those seniors, they came here and they failed. I failed, we failed, but none of us ever blamed each other. On the contrary, we showed up the next day and. The days they didn't know if they wanted to work, my staff and I provided that life. And the days that my staff and I probably laid in bed and stared at the ceiling and said, we'll never figure this out. We showed up the next day and we had a bunch of eager young guys that were like, please give me more because I've got to get better. And, and when you see them grow up and you know, like, like I took my little smart aleck jab at everyone that, that insinuated this during the year, when everyone else is doubting in Dwayne Notice, that's why I didn't doubt in Dwayne Notice. Uh, you know, and Justin, Justin, Justin didn't, you know, he was bothered by his body, didn't play well the last two, three weeks of the season. I didn't doubt in Justin because he went through a bad stretch there. He's had a heck of a senior year, and I'm so happy he helped us win here in the postseason. It's a, uh, it's a special, those three guys are special. They, they've, they've, they've grown up together. Uh, and they've done an unbelievable job of representing our program and leading our program. Coach, I know you talk about the seniors, but I'm wondering just your take. When Chris Silva plays at the level he has the last two tournament games, just how good can this team really be when Silva is clicking like the manner in which he has, especially the last few games he's played? Yeah, Chris, Chris has a chance to be a dynamic player. Uh, he, he continues the, the growth 
that he has shown over the last two years, I'm not just talking about freshmen here, I'm talking about high school junior to high school senior, high school senior to, to college freshman, those two years, because this year's not complete yet. If he continues the trajectory that he's shown those two years, plus what he's done this year, he's got a chance to be an unbelievable basketball player. Um, Chris continues to understand the game. It, you know, it, it, like in the Duke game, he was so nervous. Like all our guys, I was nervous. Our whole team was like, not nervous in a negative way, like, oh my God, we can't win. No, nervous from it just, we can't wait to get this thing started. And we missed, we missed shots because we were too, too juiced up. And Chris fumbled some balls that he, he sh you know, I, I understand he's dropped some passes this year, but the ones he dropped in that game and the shots he missed in that game were just straight tension. Um, I think at halftime he settled down. But Chris, Chris has been great. And, I'm, and I said this after the game, I'm, I'm harder on him than anyone on our team. I'm just telling you. you got to take my word on that one. He never cries, never pouts, never comes in and creates excuses comes in every day and he will not come off the practice court. Uh, I have to get him off the practice court. Uh, if not, the backups never get repetitions because he won't come out. Um, it's, he, he's, 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 he's a wonderful young man uh, that, uh, uh, and we're, we're forcing him to learn faster than the average, no pun intended, Joe has to learn. It's, uh, uh, he, he, because he has to be good for our team to be good. And he's understood that since day one this year. You've spoken a few times about how you're not crazy about the, uh, the, 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 the thought that's out there, this is not a good offensive basketball team. And Sin said that they heard before the Marquette and the Duke game, oh, we're terrible offensively, they're great offensively. <sighs> how have your guys been able to work through some of the offensive things they've dealt with this year? And do you feel like putting the kind of points up they've put up in the second half of the last two games allows them to show people, yeah, we can score points when things come together for us? Yeah. I I, 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 I hear the, the whole, that whole kind of deal. You think we average 52 points a game the way people speak about our team. We average 72 points a game. Um, you remember early in the year, we were scoring a pretty high clip. Uh, we had conference games where we scored at a high clip. Like someone asked me, oh, you got to – maybe they didn't look at our Auburn game. Maybe that game was just deleted. Maybe the LSU game was just deleted off the, off the, the slate. Maybe the Texas A&M game was just – let's just act like that game didn't, never existed. Uh, I think our conference doesn't get credit for how good it is defensively. Uh, if you look across the country, everyone scores a little less in conference play. It's just – it's the way it is. And uh, – uh, there, there are two things that went into this. Um, we, our conference is pretty good. I think that I don't need to keep repeating that. I, I, I hope that anyone with any kind of an understanding of basketball, they can start making those assessments on their own without me having to force feed it down their throats. Um, uh, and we're young. We got a little tired at the end of the year. Those, all those first year guys. And PJ and Chris, we got a little tired. They, it is what it is. You know, it happens to every young team in America. It, I, I'm going to use a name here, and Cal and I spoke last night, so I know he's not going to get mad at me. Malik Monk hasn't scored 46 in a while, and he's as dynamic an offensive player as I've been around. But they're freshmen, man. This, this is hard. And as the year goes on, it doesn't get easier. It gets, it's just like living life. The older you get, it doesn't get easier. It gets harder. And it's the same way for these freshmen that are going through college the first time. It gets hard. Um, and, and I think what happened, when you combine those things and you also add to the equation, and I don't care how much I tried to deflect this, they're human beings, us getting left out last year and coming down the stretch, them worried about – Man, are we going to get left out again. We have to go win this game. We can't go through last year. I think all that kind of just kind of built in in our, in our kids, and I don't care what we did to try and deflect all that. It was a burden they had to carry. And I think now that that's gone, the postseason, 
everyone's rejuvenated. You're not playing conference opponents that know everything you do like the back of their hand. I think – I'm not going to say it's easy because it's not, but there's a certain freedom that our guys are playing with that um, that's why we've had the success we've had offensively. Frank, how much are you going to use Sindarius in the future as a, as a success example, especially for a player who, who maybe finds himself in trouble, has a troubled pass, where you can say, you know, he was suspended but then became the SEC Player of the Year and then, you know, took the team to the Sweet 16. So how much will he kind of serve as a role of a success story? I kind of don't like the way you phrase that, but – because in reality, if every one of us in this room claims we haven't had a trouble past, right. we're probably not being honest. Well, that just means no one knows right. about it. Uh, we're all human beings. We've all had issues in our life. We've all have had bad moments in our life. Uh, some of us hide them. Some of us address them. And, and that's what's awesome about him is, is that he doesn't run away from his mistakes. He understands them. He embraces them. And he grows from them, kind of the way I've tried to do in my life. And um, absolutely, that's what we're all about. We don't come in this world perfect. We don't leave this world perfect. It's a daily struggle to make the right decisions so we can do our jobs best we can. And, and that's what it's about. And, and a lot of times I think we all sit around and we want to judge others and we tend to forget that we're as big a sinners as they are. And I, I, got, I hope my 18-year-old son can grow up and become the man Sandaris has become at 22. I really do. Uh, it's, uh, um, he will be, here's the beauty of what I do. In the summer, when we have summer camps, there are guys that played for me at Kansas State. They're guys that played for us at Cincinnati. They're guys that played for me in high school. That they fly in and they all come in here for three, four, five days. Some of them will stay for two weeks. And we just sit around and say stories and laugh. And the Sindarises of the world, they sit around and hear these guys say these stories. And these guys have no affiliation to South Carolina. Five years from now, Sindaris will be part of that group that's coming back saying stories to the guys here. The powerful thing is that he played here. And, and those young kids that grow up right now, sixth, seventh graders that are watching us on TV right now, they're saying, I won't be like him. That's powerful. When you can create that kind of a moment in the lives of young people that they want to grow up and achieve like you, that's powerful stuff. And that's the, that's the platform Sindaris has taken on and one that he's doing like with just – in a remarkable way for a guy his age. I know I couldn't do it. And I ain't talking about the scoring point. I couldn't score 24 points in a season, let alone a game. But to be who he is, to grow the way he's grown, to represent us the way he does, to be loved by his teammates the way he is, that's powerful stuff. And he's letting the world see it. And I'm, I'm real proud of him. Coach, uh, what do you, have you seen anything from, from Baylor as, as far as film? Um, can you, Drawing anything from your from your Big Twelve days um, as far as, as far as the matchup for this uh, Sweet Sixteen? Yeah, when I'm watching film on them, um, when they set up in that zone, all of a sudden the basket disappears. You don't see the basket. They they just kind of got a lot of big long dudes, and they just make 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 it hard to see the rim. Um, um, they're they've got they're old. They're old. Motley's a fourth-year guy. Their center, I can't pronounce his name, and I, I don't want to massacre the young man's name. He's a fourth-year guy. Leconte's a fourth-year guy. Uh, Alaric Freeman's a fifth-year guy. Ishmael Wainwright's a fifth-year guy. Excuse me, Alaric Freeman's a fourth-year junior. Uh, um, Ish Wainwright's a fifth-year guy. They're old. When you got old guys... Those kids don't get rattled. They understand. They play. So when you're watching them, whether they're up or they're down, their demeanor, their, their, their disciplines does not change. They just stay the course, and eventually they win the game at the end. That's kind of what they do to everybody. Um, and if they get ahead of you, they don't let you back in it because 
they just don't they don't break down. There's not a bad turnover. They they don't take a bad shot uh, in the wrong time of a game, which is the problem with young teams. They they get a lead, they relax. So that means they turn it over. They take a bad shot. They take a playoff on defense, and all of a sudden you're in a in a dogfight again. Um, that's what I see from them. Very well coached, uh, very disciplined. Um, they they just they're gonna do, they're gonna get what they want offensively, and then they play that zone. You better make some jump shots against them. You, if you don't make jump shots against them, they're a problem because they have two seven footers that do an unbelievable job protecting the rim, and they play together the whole time. The whole time. Uh, so if if you try to attack the zone at the rim, uh, you're gonna have some issues. Because they're they just don't, they're not going to let you do it. Uh, so you better make some. And when I say jump shots, I don't mean threes. You got to make some threes, but you got to be able to make some some shots from the elbows, from the maybe the short corner, from the nail, you know, from those spots on the floor um, to to kind of open up the zone a little bit. And if, then if you make some of those, now you draw those big guys away from the rim. Then you got a chance to rebound it and score at the rim. There was a video of you in the locker room after the game saying, hey, let's go win this thing. What, what drew that national championship type idea at that moment out of you? I was too emotional to talk. And, um, and at the same time, I wanted those kids to believe that you guys have earned the right to go to the Sweet 16. That means you're good enough to play anyone in the country, which is – been my goal from day one here. Let's compete for an SEC championship. If we can put ourselves in a place to compete with Kentucky and whoever else is competing for a championship on a given year, then we're good enough to play against anyone in this country. And and our kids have really, really bought into that. And I thought it would be a powerful moment to let them know. Doesn't mean we're going to win it, but I believe we can win it. And let them know that in a in a in a in a moment where they're. They're happy with their accomplishment, uh, and uh, and then truth be told, I just I couldn't get any more words out of me. I I I was at a, uh, out of breath, out of emotion. Not because I jumped up and even though if I jump up and down ten times, I the shape I'm in, I'll be out of breath. But that one had nothing to do with my Phil Cornbluth shape. It had more to do with uh, the emotions running through my body at that time. Frank, what do you think makes a uh clutch player is it just talent and and experience or is, do you have to have a little bit of an attitude you think too to take over the moment um there's a confidence that those kind of players have that they have it before they ever get to college it's just uh, jacob Pullen had it denny clemente had it sindarius has it Michael Carrera had it. There's a confidence that they have before they ever get to college that's already there. Uh, and then once they get to college, it's a matter of continuing to grow. And, and the more they grow, the better they get. The better they get, the more success they have. The more success they have, the bigger their confidence. And, um, and, uh, but the one thing that, re that, that in my um, uh, history around players that have that, is they always remain humble that they can fail at any time. And uh, that confidence allows them to step up to the plate because some guys don't want that moment. And there are other guys that love that moment. And, uh, and the ones that love that moment, they also remain humble to the fact that they better be prepared and ready to go or they could fail at any time. That's the one, the one constant with all those guys, at least the names I just threw at you, that, that, that has always been there. They... Um, they believe they can do it, but they also realize that it can go the other way, and they don't. That bothers them, so they they stay committed to the task. Coach Martin here in the back. You talked earlier about Chris Silva being a little bit too jacked up in Greenville at the beginning of that game. Do you have to have a conversation with Rakim, going back home, playing in the Garden, to just kind of try to figure out a way to calm it down, even though he's, you know, where he's always dreamed to be. Um. I think our game earlier this year in that building uh, will help settle that down uh, for, for him, that he already played on that court. He actually played fairly well against Seton Hall. Um, it is a sweet 16, and 
those kids have fought their tails off to put us in that place. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind, just like going into Duke, I knew our guys were going to just fight their tail off for 40 minutes and do everything in their power uh, to play the game the right way. Uh, but, you know, we're young. And will he be a little jacked up? Yeah, he will be. That's who he is. He's, that's how he plays. He's got that raw emotion edge uh, that makes him good. Um, that the important thing is that, that we keep him and his teammates focused on what matters, which is make the plays that you've made for us all year. We don't need a superhuman effort. We don't need to be Superman, Batman, Aquaman, and all those other guys to combine the Wonder Friends on that day. We need to be South Carolina basketball. And we all have to be who we are in that moment so then as a whole we can find success. And uh, I've got all the confidence in the world that all, our guys will, will play their tails off uh, Friday night. Thanks, guys. Thank you.